Good morning. Hi, Paul Begley. Getting things going in the right direction here. And I think this is a great news story. Thank God. Thank you, God. This British couple that were held captive 388 days by Somali pirates. That's terrorism, people. I mean, if we're going to fight a war on terror, let's fight a war on terror. And uh, and that's let's include Somalia in this because Somalia is a country that's completely, completely, completely out of control, filled with terrorists. Uh, Al Shabab operates out of there. That's another terrorist group. You've got Hamas, who works out of uh, basically takes runs Palestine, the Palestinians. Hezbollah, who basically manages Lebanon. The Taliban who's in control, who has been in control of Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda, that's definitely been roaming all over Iraq and Yemen and several other countries. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got Al-Shabaab, which works out of Africa, especially Somalia. Somalia has just become a bunch of thugs and thieves, and I feel so sorry for the people who live around there. And, let me just matter of fact, let's go to Associated Press. I'm going to read an article here real quick. It's great news that these, these, these folks, 388 days? Oh, my God. All right. From Nairobi, Kenya, Paul and Rachel Chandler, the British couple held hostage by Somalian pirates for 388 days, have been given the news that Paul Chandler's father died while they were uh, in captivity. Now the Chandlers awoke Monday morning today to, for the first time for the first day of freedom since their October 2009 hijacking off the east coast of Africa. They ask in a statement to please give them some space and some privacy, and we will. We have just learned that Paul's father, though, died in late July, said Mr. Chandler, and we obviously need to come to terms with this. Uh, the couple said they would soon travel from Kenya uh, and that they spent Sunday night there and are be headed soon to the United Kingdom in England. Thank you. The retired British couple was sailing around the world in their 38-foot yacht that represented most of their entire life savings. You know, hardworking British couple, God-fearing, enjoying life on the open seas, 38-foot yacht, They, you know. And uh, when they were out there sailing, Somali pirates captured them late last year in October of 2009 and near the island, uh, near the coast of Somalia now. Now, the pirates released this couple Sunday morning, ending one of the most dramatic, drawn-out hostage situations since pirate attacks have been spiked along the coast of East Africa. And the Chandlers met with the Somali Prime Minister, um, and they even got to fly on his private jet and that flew them to Nairobi's main airport there in Kenya. Uh, these Somali pirates, you might say, this is just, you know, well, it's unfortunate they should know better. What do you mean they should know better? They have a right to sail the open seas, the international waters. You see, this is the problem. When, when people get the attitude is, you shouldn't go down that street. You should know better. You shouldn't go over here. You know that's dangerous. No, the real problem is that we set and allow that we allow people to be thugs and contract pirates to roam freely. How do we let Somalia just be this um, uncontrolled, lackluster type nation that just that harbors terrorism, harbors it? It's just ridiculous. And these Muslim uh, terrorists, uh, I, I don't even think, they don't really, this isn't really a jihadist thing. This is more of just thuggery and thievery. But that terrorist group Al-Shabaab is there, and they do have an agenda, especially when it comes to fighting with Uganda. So let me, but let me read on. Somali pirates are still holding 500 hostages right now as we speak. And they have, right now, they are, have control of 20 different vessels. The pirates typically only release hostages for multi-million dollar ransoms. But unlike the companies who own large transport ships, people like the Chandlers didn't have a chance, didn't have the money. 
and it took over 388. Now, it's been some reports that there was maybe a million dollars that were being paid to let these people go. Okay? The British government does not admit to doing any of this. Um, and from what we're hearing, it was a lot of private donations that got this money up. But, you know, it's just... Does it anger you? Uh, am I the only one? Should I only be the only person out there that's upset? I mean, I uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think as a, as, a, as a global community, we talk about being a global economic community. We have G20 summits. We have the United Nations uh, with all these fancy people show up in New York City and they book every hotel downtown. They got security. The traffic's messed up. And they let guys like Hugo Chavez come in and trash America. Hak! Madula Jah, the president of Iran, come in and trash America. Omar Gaddafi, oh my, Omar Gaddafi, come in and trash America. We let all these Saudi princes walk around. We got these guys with their harems and their geishas and all this. And, and they talk and they pass resolutions and they walk out on each other's speeches while Somali pirates have 500 people hostage and 20 boats why don't the United Nations for one time in their life put their little blue helmets on and send the power the thunder of the military power they have and take back these 20 boats and let's get it done before the end of the month what do you say because we have that capability let's just converge let's pull together as nations let's send the United States Navy let's send the British Navy let's send the French Navy let's send everybody who's uh, every boat from Saudi Arabia anybody that's got a boat and let's converge on them let's lock arms let's let's prove that we're a, a global community working together let's not just all sit back and say eh, that's not my problem See, this is the problem right there. This is why the United... Instead of going, let's just go take these 20 ships back right now by force. And let's put an end to this piracy. Or let's stamp on it. I mean, let's stomp on it. No, no, instead, you know what the United Nations did this last round? Passed by a, a resolution. Uh, we're going to have now an ambassador to the aliens. We need somebody to talk to them. In case they show up on our planet and say, Bring me to your leader. Bring me to your leader. You see the ridic you see the hypocrisy? Oh. Oh, I almost forgot. How many million dollars did it, of tax dollars went to fund this farce? Let's say that again. How much US tax dollars do we spend a year to fund the farce that we call the United Nations, who are picking uh, representatives, ambassadors to aliens, while 20 vessels on the open seas were taken cap 500 people are hostages right now. Are you serious? And we're not doing it. We as a global community, they have a G20 summit in Seoul, South Korea. Guess what? They can't even agree on an agenda when the currency is about ready to fall apart. China, we owe China, America owes China million, billions of dollars. Instead of paying our debt, which we can't, we print more money, which dilutes the pot. If you have, let's do it in simple math. If you have $3, you borrow from China, and China says pay us back four. And you only have, there's only $8 in the whole world. That's 50% of the world's money, right? That's what you owe. But if you go over here and you turn on your little printing press and print some new monopoly money and make their, now there's 12 more dollars you print, you put them in the pot, now there's $20 in the world. We only borrowed three, we're going to give you your four. China says, hold it. Because that four is not worth what it was before because you printed a bunch of funny money. And that's what America did. That's the scheme we're doing against China. China has basically <laughs> taken all our technologies we've lost all our jobs to third world countries and now we're printing funny money people this is a serious situation read your bible these are one of the signs of the bible that in a in one day the wheat and the barley the price could go out the roof for just a loaf of bread i'm paul begley let's get these people free the other 500